Welcome to our top 5 gainers and top 5 losers analysis. Today is March 13, 2019, Wednesday. My name is Jay-Z De Guzman. In this uh, video, I'm going to talk about 10 different stocks. And in, in this, in this, uh, in, in this uh, video, I'll also be discussing my technical analysis. I'll share with you my overall sentiment. I'll, I'll, t I'll, I'll uh, briefly mention uh, a few tips about uh, dividends, if there are some dividend announcements for any of these 10 stocks. And finally, I'll be giving you my trade setups, trade setups, or my recommended plan of actions. Okay, for the top five gainers, I'll be talking about SMPH, MBT, URC, FGN, and BHI. For the top five losers, I'll be talking about JGS, Green, PHA, ZHI, and MAC or MAC. Let's start with SMPH. But before we pull out the chart of SMPH, I'd like to to check if there are some dividend announcements for this stock. Uh, it looks like there are no dividend uh, there are no new dividend announcements yet for 2019 so far so let's move on to the chart of SMPH today SMPH closed at 37.65 although it's a green candlestick it is, it still has a lot of that uh, it, it has to do it has a lot of work to do because it's still below the 10 day simple moving average for those who have SMPH in their portfolio what you, will, what you would want to see is for the price to move higher than the intersection between the 10 SMA and the, fi and the 50 SMA, and that's above 38.5. That's somewhere near 38.5. That's the intersection between these two moving averages. Why? What's the, what's the matter if it crosses above 38.5? Well, even when that happens, that puts SMPH in a bullish bullish. Uh, position at least in the short term period okay but right now right now as we can see uh, uh, on this chart the support that is in confluence with the position of the 200 day SMA was respected yesterday that's why the price bounced away uh, when the price uh, uh, drew closer to the position of the 200 day SMA near 36.60 Okay, so even though SMPH is may even though SMPH appears appears bearish in the short term, it still maintains its uh, bullish position in the long term scale. How did I know? The price is still way above the 200 day SMA, but it's not that far. So as soon as the price, even when the price breaks down below 36.5, that will put SMPH. Uh, in a bearish position both in the short term and long term periods okay major support is at 35.40 major resistance is at 39.70 today's volume was higher than the 10 day volume average of SMPH meaning to say um, the investors of SMPH really uh, so convincing uh, they just had they just had this strong appetite to to buy the dips that were created uh, yesterday particularly okay now for the 2019 year to date net foreign trade it's more or less a net foreign selling status for SMPH MACD still remains in a bearish direction just like what I've told you I think when the price breaks out above 38.5 or at least closer to 39.70 that will be the time when MACD will bend uh, from the from the southward going to the northward direction and hopefully it will then uh, cross above the signal line okay SMPH still has a low um, a low risk level because of its volatility score of 41 percent now let's take a look at the volume review remember SMPH closed at 37.65 and the net foreign trade today is a net foreign selling worth 16 million pesos now let's take a look at the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades. If I were to pick a range, that would be 37.10 all the way to 37.65. Okay, 37.10 to 37.65. So that's the range that you need to monitor if you would like to trade the name. Now what's my overall sentiment on SMPH? I still have a bearish... Um, a bearish uh, neutral to bearish neutral to bearish overall sentiment for SMPH what's my recommended plan of action for those who have a position on SMPH 
let's do, let's check first here. Is SMPH in our investment guide for long-term investing? Yes, it is. And what's my recommended uh, rate? What's my rating for SMPH? It's a it's a buy rating. Okay. So if you if you already have SMPH in your portfolio, you can actually buy the dips. And I hope you did yesterday. If yesterday was your top-up schedule, okay, you buy on the dips. You buy the dips. All right. Now you don't buy at any price. Always remember that. So where should where should you buy then? Remember, I just gave you the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades. So that's where you need to park. That's where you need to monitor. That's where you need to position your buying prices. Okay. Now, what if you don't have SMPH yet? What should you do? I recommend that you wait for some pullbacks, prefer preferably near 36.6. Yesterday's closing price, actually. So I do hope you already entered to that position, okay? Or if not at 36.6, maybe near the support at 35.40, okay? The evergreen advice for relatively young or newbie investors, buy on the dips, buy near the support level, okay? How likely is it for SMPH to inch closer to 35.40? Well, we can only we can only be confident to say that it, that it's it's it is on its way to 35.40 if we see a red candlestick here again and then there's a corresponding a bearish volume that's above the 10-day volume average. Okay? That's a confirmation of a panic selling. Right now, as far as today's wind candlestick and volume are concerned, of course, obviously there's no panic selling. There's no continuity of yesterday's uh, bearish price movement. Okay? So there you go for SMPH. Now let's talk about the next stock in the list. What do we have? We have MBT. I already discussed about MBT last March 7, 2019. During that day, it was also in the top five gainers list. Now let's take a look. Uh, take a look uh, at its dividend announcements, if there's any. And let's also pull up the chart of MBT. Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company has it had okay had dividend announcements last February 26, 2019, one peso per share, one peso per share. Well, that was February 26, 2019. That was the ex dividend date. So I'm not going to talk about the uh, that particular cash dividend. Oh, by the way, there's a 13% stock dividend announcement in here. However. The ex dividend date, the record date, the payment date are yet to be announced. Okay, to be announced. It's a 13% stock dividend. Okay, so once we see a date in here, and if MBT makes it again in the top five gainers or top five losers list, I'm going to talk about some uh, strategies when we we see the defined dates for the ex dividend date of this 13% stock dividend of MBT. But until then, let's talk about the chart of MBT for now. Okay, let's take a look at the chart of MBT. So, let me plot the support and resistance levels of MBT. Okay, immediate, immediate resistance is at 84.70. Immediate support is at 75.10. Okay. Now, what if it breaks out above uh, 84.70? Where will be the next resistance then? No problem. Let me plot that for you. So these are the estimates. So the next resistance above 84.70 would be 95.40. If it breaks down below the immediate support at 75.10, your next support would be 64 pesos per share. Today, MBT closed at 78.90. It managed to inch back above the 10 day simple moving average however it was still not enough to regain its position above the 50 day sma for those who have mbt in their portfolio already uh, what you would like to see is for the price to move above 81.80 why what's up with 81.80 that's the intersection between 10 sma and the 50 sma of course it would be a lot better for you if you if you see the price inching closer getting closer to 84.70 okay 
The support at 75.10 was respected as the price bounced away last March 1 on that level. Okay, that uh, this uh, support level is also in confluence with the position of the 50-day, no, not the 50, but the 200-day SMA. It's the long-term SMA. So technically speaking, MBT is already in a bullish position both in the short-term and long-term time scale. However, um, as far as uh, being as far as bullishness is concerned, what you would want to see is for is for the 10 SMA to cross above the 50 SMA again. That's going to be a golden cross if, when that happens. Okay. Now let me make some. Let me do some. Make give you some comments about today's volume. What do I see about today's volume? Today's green candlestick. Uh, has, we can say it a relatively significant volume, although it's not that high. It's below expectations. Why below expectations? Because today's volume is, although it's above 50% of the 10-day volume average, it did not manage to register to print a volume that's above the 10-day volume average. Okay. Uh, for for the price, for the ascent in price to be more likely to you know to continue. Uh, aside from from seeing a green candlestick, we would also want to see a volume bar that's above the 10-day volume average, preferably speaking. Okay. Now, the year-to-date net foreign trade of on MBT is, I would say, it's a net foreign selling. Net foreign selling. Um, another, there's one point going to the side, going to the court of the bulls, and that is the MACD maintaining its position above the signal line. Okay, so take note of this. This is a buy signal already. Are you familiar with our 10 SMA MACD combo? MACD crossed above the signal line and when that happens, the price also recovered its position above the 10-day simple moving average. So that's a uh, that's, uh, uh, confirmed buy entry or entry signal on MBT. Plus, there's no liquidity issue. Since the, since the volume is a, at least 50% above the 10-day volume average, okay. Volatility-wise, MBT has a volatility score of 42%, and that maintains its low risk level. Okay. Now let's take a look at the volume review. Again, remember MBT closed at 78.90 today, and it registered a 42 registered 42.4 million pesos worth of net foreign buying. Now, how about the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades? I see one dominant price in here, which is 78.90, which is the closing price as well. And it, it's the intraday high. Why? What's up with 78.90 in terms of volume? Well, it got 35% of today's volume with 77 trades. On the other hand, the other two price points that got 313 and 206 uh, trades respectively are... 78.35 and 78.40 so if i were to give you a range i would mention that you monitor two you monitor one price point and then you monitor one range or let's make it one and what's that range that you should monitor 78.35 all the way to 78.90 okay that's the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades today all right so how about my overall sentiment for mbt I still have a bullish uh, bullish sentiment for MBT. And by the way, it's part of our investment guide for long-term investing. I still have a buy rating for MBT with an upside score of about 15%. Okay. So for those who ha already have MBT in their portfolio, um, it's not a mortal scene. In fact, I would recommend that you follow your top-up schedule and then you top up, again, not at any price, but within those uh, within those prices that I put in here that we put in here on the long on the long term investing uh, tab take a look at the top 5 prices trades top 5 prices volume vwap top 10 players buying average these are your buying candidates okay buying candidates for mbt okay if you would like to see the the newest uh, um, numbers or the latest updates you may always post an update in our private clients forum now how about for those who don't have MBT yet if you don't have MBT yet it's either you wait near the support level at 75 or you buy in tranches 
at what price? At that range that I mentioned a while back. Okay? You buy in tranches. Okay? So that's what you do for MBT. And uh, that recommendation is on the side of the long-term investors. So how about for the short-term traders? Well, I don't recommend uh, doing some short-term trading on index stocks, actually. Okay? Uh, it's boring. It's uh, relatively speaking, it's uh, boring to do short-term trading on index stocks. Look for some penny stocks out there. Okay. So there you go for MBT. All right. Now let's take a look at the next stock in the list. So I have URC. Okay. I discussed, I talked about URC last February 28, 2019. So maybe there are a lot of, lots of things already happen on, on URC. And by the way, URC is not part of our investment guide for long-term investing yet. That's the operative word, yet. Okay. Now let's take a look at the chart of URC. And while we're waiting for the chart to, um, uh, to appear in its entirety, let me check first if there are some, there are some dividend announcements. Oh yes, there is. Um, one peso and 65 centavos cash dividend for URC holders. The ex dividend date is on June 26, 2019. Okay, June 26, 2019. Oh, by the way, there was a one peso and 50 centavo cash dividend with an ex dividend date last, last March 11, 2019. That was Monday. Okay, so, so since that one already happened. It's in a past tense mode. Let me talk about this one that's still in the future tense mode. What is that? That's the one peso and 65 centavo cash dividend date or cash dividend with the next dividend date of June 26, 2019. Every here you go. Let, let me let me let me talk first to the buyers. Okay. Every single URC shares that you will buy and keep in your portfolio before. Okay. Before. If you will buy URC shares before June 26, 2019, those shares will be candidates for the cash dividend. Well, assuming you're going to buy on, on June 25 or before June 26, and then you will keep keep them in your portfolio until the ex-dividend date. Okay? Until, I did not say until before, but until on the exact ex-dividend date. Okay, You keep them. And those shares will then be entitled to this cash dividend. What if you will buy on or after June 26? Well, those URC shares will not be counted in the cash dividend. Okay, I'm done with the seller. I'm the, with the buyers. Now I'm going to talk with the sellers. If you will sell your URC shares before, okay, before June 26, 2019, then those URC shares will not be counted in this cash dividend. But if you will sell on or after June 26, then Congratulations, you will receive cash dividends. Okay, so that's how it works. Let's talk about a chart of URC. URC closed at 144.80 centavo, centavos today. Okay, it managed to regain its position. Actually, it already regained its position since yesterday. It has already regained its position since yesterday above the 10 day simple moving average. And uh, for those who already have URC, what you would want to see here is for the price to, to what? To inch closer to 151. That's the resistance. And by the way, support is at 139.80. Again, why would you want to see, why did I say that you would want to see the price um, drawing closer to the resistance at 151? What's the reason behind that? When that happens, we will see the 10 SMA moving above the 50 SMA. Why? What's up with that? What's up with the 10 SMA moving above the 50 SMA? Well, for those who have been listening to me every single day through these videos, you know you already know the reason why. And so for those for the new new subscribers, here's the reason. When that happens, when the 10 SMA is above the 50 SMA and the 50 SMA is above the 200 day SMA, green, red, blue, and the price is above the green line, which is the 10 SMA, well. Congratulations, your stock is moving in the bullish direction, both in the short-term and long-term scales. That's what it means. Okay. Let me make some comments about today's volume. Today's volume, I think it's 50% uh, or more or less 50% of its 10-day volume average. Um, you would want to see a bigger volume than this. 
or who are these yous that I'm talking talking with? I'm talking with the with the ones who already have URC in their portfolio. Why? Why did I say that? Why did I make that comment uh, regarding the volume of uh, URC for today's trading? That's because if we see a green candlestick and we are hoping for some continuity, then we better see. We are better off seeing a volume bar that's not just 50% of its 10-day volume average, but if possible, above the 10 day volume average when that happens then there will be a more bullish conviction a more bullish conviction to say that the price is more likely to continue going higher okay that's what it means on the other hand macd already crossed above the signal line macd already crossed above the signal line yesterday the price went above the, the 10 sma but this time macd already crossed above the signal line so if you were to ask, if you are if you're going to ask me this is a buy signal already. Okay? This is a buy signal already. Now let me make some comments about the year to date net foreign trade. URC is on a net foreign buying year to date. Okay? URC also has a low risk level because of its volatility score of 47%. Now let's talk about the volume review for URC before I give you my overall sentiment and recommendations. Remember, URC closed today at 144.80 and it registered a net foreign buying worth 19 million. Now let's talk about the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades. At a glance, at a glance, you might be thinking that 141.90 and 142 is the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades. On one side, that is right. That range got the biggest volume. However, there's, an, there's a how, however here, okay? 141.90, although it got 30% of today's volume, only three trades happened at that price. So there's a high probability that these three trades are just cross trades. And I do not include cross trades in my volume review. Okay. Now, how about 142? It got 31% of today's volume. How about the number of trades? Well, 49. So, I'm not going to raise an eyebrow on that one. So, maybe there's one or two cross trades. There, there are, there's one or two cross trades that happen at 142. But with 49 trades, I would say I'm going to include this one in my volume review i'm going to consider this one as a price point that is worthy to, to be monitored by the next trading day okay so we got 142 how about 144.80 it got 20 percent of today's volume with 80, 88 trades 88 trades you also got to monitor this price and lastly i would also recommend monitoring 143 what's up with 143 well it got uh, 3.47 percent of today's volume but but it got 153 153 trades okay 153 trades actually I'm I'm seeing some several uh, several uh, price points and ranges that are scattered strategically on the volume review tab let me mention them one by one okay first not in particular order just take some notes on these price points that i'm going to tell you first 144.8 and then 143.40 all the way to 143.5 and then 143 and then 142 did you get those price points those are the ones that you need to monitor tomorrow if you are going to trade the name okay now, how about the my overall sentiment for URC? I have a neutral, um, a neutral to bullish uh, sentiment for URC. Okay, and if you already have a position on URC, make sure that uh, you already know where your trailing stop loss is. If your trailing stop loss is still below the current price, below the current price, if it's still not being hit, okay then you may either hold your position or you top up you add more shares okay 
you add more shares or you hold your position do nothing just monitor now if you don't have mb you don't if you don't have urc shares yet well let's say if you have urc shares but let's say your average price is higher than 144.80 meaning to say you chase the price all the way when it was near 150 and you bought there at the top okay what should you do well i hope you know where your where your, where your trailing stop loss is but if you don't know where you're trying where your trailing stop loss is and this is the first time that you've heard about this tsl my recommendation is you calculate your trailing stop loss immediately do not postpone and how should you do that how can you calculate your trailing stop loss when you're already when you are already late in calculating it? This is what you should do. Situation, I'm going to give you one. Your average price is higher than the current price. How do you calculate your trailing stop loss? Calculate it from your from your from where? From the current price or your average price? From your average price because your average price is higher than the current price price let's say you have a 10 percent risk tolerance what you should do then is to get 90 percent of your average price and that should be your trailing stop loss all right there you go now what if you don't have urc yet my recommendation is the, uh, two things it's either you wait again for a pullback near 139.80 or 1.39 or you may buy in tranches okay this recommendation is for the long-term investors if you're looking at urc for short-term trading please take a look at other stocks i really don't recommend index stocks when it comes to short-term trading okay i personally get bored when i do short-term trading on index stocks i don't trade i don't trade on a short-term basis uh, in the index stocks i i take a look at the uh, at the speculative stocks instead okay so that's my comment for URC. Now, how about for FGEN? Did I already talk about FGEN in the past? Oh, yeah, I did a lot of times. I talked about FGEN last March 4, March 11, just yesterday, 12, and now again. Okay, let's take a look first if it has some dividend, new dividend announcements for 2019. Are you there? Mm, let's find out. Nada. None yet. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh chart of fgen okay fgen closed today at 21.5 yesterday where was fgen yesterday yesterday fgen was in the top five losers now it's in the top five gainers it's uh, well ob uh, apparently fgen respected the support at the support near 20.70 which is in confluence meaning it's uh, in, in alignment with the position of the 50 SMA now despite this green candlestick today it's a cross and it's still uh, below this the 10 day simple moving moving average since it's a cross candlestick to me what do I mean what do I how do I translate this one to me this means that there's there was a tag of war there was a, there was a there was an intense tag of war between the bears and the bulls the buyers and the sellers all throughout the day that's why they met halfway okay almost halfway nonetheless the the volume today is more than 50 percent of the of the more than 50 percent of the 10-day volume average of fgen although it's still below the 10-day volume average but still it's uh supportive to the greenness okay greenness or to the bear, uh, bullish movement of the pr uh, of the price today as it closed in green okay today is still a net foreign selling worth 26 or 27 million pesos okay that's the net foreign selling for today macd um it still has not shown any significant uh, change in direction um uh, going above the uh, signal line so I think this will just show a significant uh, uh, bend um, with a point with a uh, with a with a uh, position uh, crossing above the signal line if and when the price breaks out above 22.50 
that's the immediate resistance. And by the way, the immediate support is at 19.40. Even when it breaks out above uh, 22.5, where where will be the what's the next resistance then? Even when it breaks out above 22.5, let me plot that for you. So that would be somewhere near 26.5. So that's the next resistance above 22.5. It would be 26.5. If it breaks down below 19.4, 17.10 will be your next support. Okay. FGen got uh, a low risk level. It is still has a volatility score of 48%. Now let's talk about the volume review. Again, FGen closed at 21.50 today. And the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is 21.25 all the way to 21.5. Again, 21.25 all the way to 21.50. Okay. My overall sentiment on FGen is neutral to bullish. Why neutral? I still have some reservations about this uh, cross like uh, candlestick in here. Um, when when I see a cross candle, uh, for me that's a, that signifies a tag of war between the bears and the bulls. So it's the the game still not finished, so to speak. Okay, so we are yet to find out. We still have two two more trading days before we conclude this trading week. Okay, now if you don't if you already have FGen, by the way, let's check first if it's in our investment guide for long term investing. No, it's not. If you already have FGen in your portfolio and your average price is uh, lower than 21.5, the, the closing price, then just be on top of your trading stop loss. You should know when you should sell, at what price you should sell, when things turn, turn sour and the prices go south. Okay. If you don't have FGen yet, my recommendation is still to Wait for the price to register another pullback near 20.60 or preferably near 19.4. Okay, because of my reservation, uh, it's a neutral to bullish because of this reservation. There's still some, um, you know, some insights uh, in me that uh, tell me that there's still a probability for the price uh, to break below the two the 50 SMA. So somehow, uh, I, uh, I think this is a not really, a, not really, not necessarily a false rebound, but uh, let's say an, uh, a weak rebound. I think that's a better term for that. It's a weak rebound because of how the candlestick looks like for me, to me. Okay. So that's it for F Gen. Now let's talk about the next one. We have B H I. Did I talk about BHI in the past already? I did. When? Last March 5 to March and March 8. Okay, now let me check first if it has some dividend announcements. Okay, BHI has no dividend announcements yet for 2019. Let's talk about a chart. BHI closed today at 0 0.79. Immediate resistance is near 0 0.08. Immediate support is at 0 0.065. Today's ascent in price was supported with uh, volume. Okay, it's a it's an evidently significant volume today. Although although the foreign investors didn't uh, they did not seem to like that. Anyway, their participation for today is only a misly amount of 341,000 worth of net foreign selling. It's insignificant. Okay. Now, what's the if it breaks out above 0 0.8, what will be the next resistance? Let me flat that for you again. So the next resistance above 0 0.08 is at 0 0.097. If it breaks down below 0 0.649 or 65, 0 0.065, the next support is at 0 0.052. MACD is still bullish. BHI has a high risk level. How did I get that? It has a volatility score of 87%. Okay. Now, let's talk, let's take a look at the uh, volume review for FGen. The price that got no not FGen anymore. BHI. 
So again, BHI closed today at 0 0.079. And it looks like every single transacted price points today is a good range to monitor. But let's pick the best ones instead. So 0 0.078. Oh no, 0 0.08 got 44% of today's trading, today's uh, volume rather, while 0 0.078 got 21%, followed by 0 0.079 with 16%. So let's uh, get the price points uh, in between. So that would be 0 0.078 all the way to 0 0.08. Monitor that range if you are interested to trade the name. Now, it's talking about trading the name. I'll give you my overall sentiment. I have a bullish sentiment on BHI. However, for the new traders out there, do not chase the stock all the way to the immediate support or resistance at 0 0.08. Stop chasing if you are just new, a new trader. Okay? New trader. Um, if, if a buy on breakout is your, is your strategy, I would suggest that if and when the price moves or breaks out above 0 0.08 and you still see a towering volume just like this one here, today's volume, you may want to consider doing a test by then. Who Am I talking to the experienced traders or the newbie, newbie uh, traders? It can be both. It can be both. Okay. Um, it, it all depends on your risk appetite. If you are... A newbie investor newbie trader and you are you have a low risk profile then I would suggest you buy on pullbacks or buy near support if you are a newbie trader but you have uh, an extremely ri uh, high risk tolerance or uh, yeah high risk appetite you can do the buy on breakouts strategy all right now if you don't have a BHI yet what should you do I think I already gave you some plans already okay some trade setups for BHI so that's it for BHI now let's let's see the top five losers we have JGS let me check first if I already talked about JGS in the past oh I did last February 18 and during that day it was in the top five gainers it was actually that number one gainer last on that day Okay, let's set, let's check first if it has some dividend announcements. No dividend announcements yet for 2019. Now let's move on to the chart of JGS. JGS closed today at 63.20. Unfortunately, it has not recovered its position above. Not only has it not recovered its position above the 10 day SMA, it also break broke down below the position of the 50 SMA so now it has two moving averages that it, that it needs to overtake um, and that's just above the uh, immediate resistance at 66.50 so meaning to say once it breaks out above 66.50 it has already regained its position above two above two moving averages two simple moving averages to be specific Immediate support is at 60.30. Um, do I think that this descent in price is more likely to continue? I think so. It's a towering volume today. It's above the 10-day volume average. Okay. So watch out for JGS near 60.30. Once it uh, hits 60.30 and we still see a towering volume, then you adjust your waiting zone. Near? Near where? Uh, somewhere here first the the in confluence the 200 day SMA that's 55.40 before 51.2 okay all right so how about the year-to-date of uh, net foreign trade for of JGS it's a net foreign buying for JGS for 2019 year-to-date MACD still of course bearish what do you expect it's below the 50 SMA right uh, JGS is uh, it has a low risk level because of its low volatility score of 27 percent now is JGS in our investment guide for long-term investing no it's not let's take a look at the volume review remember it closed today at 63.20 and it registered a net for and selling worth 20, 12 million pesos Okay, now let's take let's uh, find out 
what are, what's the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades today? Uh, I, I saw it already. So, monitor 62.5. Well, I actually monitor it from 62.4 all the way to 63.20. Or 63.25 uh, this one uh, let's let's adjust it adjust it further let's uh, let's skip those other price points that did not get much volume so to be more precise I would suggest that you monitor 63 between 63 all the way to 63.25 63 to 63.25 so that's the price point that I suggest that you monitor if and only if you are interested to trade JGS. Let's move on to my overall sentiment for JGS. I still have a bearish, bearish sentiment, total bearish sentiment for JGS. Do you see this green, green volume bar here? It's above the 10-day volume average. Remember that. Now, if you don't have JGS, good. Monitor, wait, be on wait and see mode, stay in the sidelines. Monitor at 60.30. Okay, wait for some deeper dips, bigger dips. Okay, what if you don't? You already have JGS, and your average price is actually whether your your average price is above or below the current price, just stick with your trailing stop loss. Okay, that's the only way for you to limit your losses. Okay, limit your losses. Be strategic, be logical when it comes to trading. Okay. All right. Now, what if you have JGS not for trading purposes, but for long-term investing purposes? Then I suggest that you keep some wide stops. How does it mean, Jay Z? Please speak in English. Okay. When I say trade with wide stop, wide stops, it means to say like this: If if on short if in, if if on short-term trading, your trailing stop loss is, is at 5%, then you have to make it wider when it comes to long-term investing. It could be above about maybe 10 to 20%. It's a wider stop. Okay, What's the significance of that? What's the significance of putting up a, a wider stop on your uh, exit strategy or risk management? It's important so that you don't get wiped out too early in the game. So you don't get wiped out uh, too early. Okay, so that's it uh, for JGS. Now let's move on to the next one. We have green. I already discussed green. I think it was just yesterday. Actually, a lot of times, six times already. JGS, uh, green. I, I was already. I have been bearish on green since yesterday. Not just yesterday, since since when? Since March 6. Okay, but anyway, for what it's worth, let's check out the chart again. Okay, so green has no dividend announcements yet. How about the chart? For sure, I'm still bearish on JGS. Oh, not JGS, green. So green closed today at 2.45. Of course, the support level is still at 2.34. Resistance is at 2.90. That was its previous support, and it already crossed. It continued to cross below, below, okay, not above, below its 50-day SMA. If this uh, bearish volume won't uh, uh, reduce its size, it won't be impossible. It is, it is no longer impossible to see then to see green below 2.34. If not below 2.34, at least uh, it will retest. 2.34. Okay. Again, if this bearish volume will not relax, okay, because if uh, green continues to register a green candlestick and then volume is still is always above that 10-day uh, volume average, then that's already an obvious sign that the bearish price action uh, is more likely to continue. That's why I keep my 
bearish overall sentiment on green as early as now that there you go for my overall sentiment okay let's move on to the other stock okay no 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 uh volatility volatility wise uh green has an ex has a high risk level because of its 92 percent volatility score well of course since uh, it's another green candlestick meaning to say macd remains its bearish uh position on green green again close today at 2.45 and just like yesterday the biggest volume that uh, the big the price that got the biggest volume in the highest number of trade was its intraday low and speaking of which 2.45 is not just its closing price but it's also its intraday low so it's all the more that you need to monitor below 2.45 or near the support at one at uh, 2.34 once it breaks down below 2.34 then be, in, be on, on relax mode and wait for it again until it hits 1.90 or at least, at least near 1.90 okay so there you go for, for my overall sentiment and trade setups for green let's move on to the next stock in the list we have paj premier premier horizon alliance corporation did i already discuss discussed pha yesterday yesterday it was in the top five losers as well okay and does it have some dividend announcements for us none yet for 2019 okay so pha is at the brink of breaking down below the support at 1.19 it's already there almost there okay and volume it's still above its 10-day volume average although this is a, a flimsy volume of course it's just a 10-day volume average and in the past 10 trading days volume has been flimsy what do you expect of course even though it's above the 10-day volume average or on an in an overall statement it's still a relatively um, small volume that's why um, macd is still busy moving in a bearish convergence bearish convergence with the signal line okay so there's uh, i don't see anything interesting with pha we're just talking about this stock right now because it made it in the top five losers list with uh the biggest uh you know the top five losers with the biggest total traded value and that's the only reason why and i'm not talking about pha now because i'm interested on this stock now <laughs> I am far from being interested at least for now at least for now that's not a forever sentiment for pha okay now let's move on to the uh the price or the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades pha closed at 1.19 and here's the range that uh, that got the biggest uh, volume and the highest number of trades um we have 1.17 all the way to 1.22 1.17 to 1.22 all right now let's talk about zhi and i can tell you that i already talked about zhi oh yeah a lot of times today is the seventh day okay and when was the last time uh not today but last last march 7 it was it was also in the top five losers back then so Let's also find out if it has some dividend announcements for 2019 already. No, none yet. Okay, Z closed today. There you go. It already broke below the support at 0 0.34. Z closed today at 0 0.335, 0 0.335. And the next support is at 0 0.31. Okay. Volume is uh, relatively high as it closed above the 10 day volume average. MACD is still bearish. What do you expect? The price is uh, descending. And uh, Z already has an extremely high risk level. Why? It has a volatility score. What type of volatility? Implied or historical? Okay. Historical volatility score of 106%. Okay so how about the prices 
that got the biggest volume, the highest number of trades. As it closed at 0 0.335 today, um, the range that got the biggest volume is between 0 0.335 all the way to 0 0.345. Okay. My overall sentiment remains bearish if you don't have Z. Thank you for not having Z yet, for saving yourself some headache. Okay, so monitor the price within this uh, support level, 0 .0 0 0.31. If, uh, if it touches 0 0.31 and you still see a bearish volume, then adjust your patience all the way to 0 0.26. Okay, I hope none of you has a ZHI. I, I do hope. I really do. Okay, so that's it for ZHI. Okay, last stock in the list. What do we have? MAC. And this is the first time that I'll be talking about MA, MAC. Okay, well, since since the day that we started this top five gainers and top, top five losers analysis on a daily basis, it has no dividend announcements yet for 2019. Okay, so let's go straight to the chart. MAC closed at 19.42. Immediate support is at 16. Immediate resistance is at 21. And while it's oh, not, uh, no, it's no longer above its 10-day SMA. It's already below its 10-day SMA. And but here's the thing. Today's volume, despite the red candlestick, is below the 50% of its 10-day volume average, meaning to say those who have MAC in their portfolio, MAC, did not see anything alarming today for them to do panic selling. They did not participate that much. How did I know? Don't you see the volume? It's not even above 50%. It's not even 50% of its 10-day volume average. So there was uh, a lack of appetite to do some panic selling. Okay. There you go. Of course, MAC is bearish. It's been moving sideways uh, for the past few trading days. Okay. And it has a volatility score of 29%. 29% and that gives it a low risk level. Okay, for those who have been curious about why is JC talking about the risk level of the stock every time he discusses the chart. Of course, for the newbie traders, I always recommend that you start with, you consider low to moderate risk stocks. For the experienced ones, you are free. I would suggest that, uh, not a suggestion, but I would, uh, you may trade stocks with the moder uh, with the high to extremely high risk level however however listen to this one newbie traders not because you see a low risk level for that stock that does not make the stock an automatic buy okay we have to be um we have to exercise common sense can i say say that say it that way why do we have to exercise common sense because even though you see a low risk uh, low risk level for that stock brought it brought about by its low volatility score there 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 are still there are some stocks that are moving in a downtrend channel that are uh, that have a low risk level so th that's what it means okay so when you see a low risk level take a look first at the chart is is it more likely to continue moving downwards? If 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 it is if it is, especially if you ask me for my insights or analysis, and I say yes, there is uh, a high probability for the descent in price to continue, then you avoid that stock for the meantime. Okay, even though you heard me say that it has a low risk level. Okay, so that's how you strike a good balance between uh, what these indicators are telling us. Okay. At the end of the day, remember that these indicators are not, uh, uh, it's not an exact science. Okay. It's not an exact science. It's, it's not like one plus one, the answer, the, the sum is always two. Okay. Uh, it's not like that. Here, even though you see a bullish or a bearish can, when you see, for example, when you see that MACD is uh, bullish, sometimes 
the price has already been moving in a downtrend direction for the past two trading days, but MACD is still above the signal line. Okay, That's why you need to mix and match what your indicators are telling you. And if you still can't do that, so it's a good thing that you have me here, That's what, so I can interpret it for you. Okay, Now for MACD, my overall sentiment is bearish. It's a bearish, but I have a bearish uh, translation on what I've seen on MACD's chart. If you don't have MAC yet, good. Don't have it just yet. Okay, no need to hurry. There are 200 plus stocks that you can check. Okay, so that's my overall sentiment and the recommended plan of, plan of action for MAC. So today I was able to discuss 10 different stocks. I do hope you've learned something and you are prepared for tomorrow, especially if you have one or two or three or more of these stocks and if you are in the planning stage and you're asking what what does JC have to say about this stock because I'm planning to trade this name tomorrow there you go you've heard my analysis my overall sentiment my uh, uh, trade setups or recommended plan of actions okay if you have some questions please ask in our private clients forum and by the way I would like to tell you that you can take a look at the seminars on our website just go to www.equalist.com and then click on seminars take a look if you if there is a scheduled seminar advanced seminar near your area so these are seminars that are so focused that I only want to talk to 30 people maximum in a room so that I can answer all the all their questions I don't want to end uh, that the workshop with so many unanswered questions that's why it's a, it's you know these seminars that I'm holding in Manila, Pampanga, Baguio, Cebu, Davao, Iloilo, um, I limit each session in, into 30 people. So if I were you, I'm going to reserve my spot because, uh, yeah, there are only 30 people and hundreds if not thousands of people are visiting our website every single day. Okay, so it's in a first come, first serve basis. So if you didn't make it in the first batch, second batch or third batch, then we will let you know in which batch you are in already. Okay, so there you go uh, for today's top five gainers and top five losers analysis. My name is JC De Guzman. Have a great day. Thank you.